somewhere. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yeah. Happy Monday. Uh, how many people are in here? I can't see. Uh, I see. Six and rising. Right? Okay, yeah. there we it's go. Coming. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, a couple of y'all recommended this movie, which I had been wanting to watch, actually, because, yeah, they had just added it on Shudder. And this is Mad God. Now, this was made by Phil Tippett. Now, if you don't know who Phil Tippett is, he's kind of like one of the animation, particularly stop motion animation, but he does computer stuff, too, like going way back to the 80s. I mean, he worked on... The original Star Wars trilogy, he worked on Robocop, uh, Jurassic Park, Starship Troopers, Willow, Dragonheart, Dragon Slayer, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the Twilight movies, um, just fuck tons of stuff. And actually more recently, he opened his own uh, animation studio in 84, I think, and they've been working on, recently they're working on the new... Um, DC movie, Black Adam. Okay. Uh, they did, uh, you know, The Mandalorian. They worked on that. They worked on Book of Boba Fett. Like, all kind of stuff. Like, some of the Marvel movies. So, the dude is, like, a legend. Um, he does, like I said, other kinds of animation, too. But stop motion is kind of his thing. Now, Mad God, I think this kind of became sort of like a long-awaited kind of thing that people wanted to see. Because he actually started working on this back in the 80s. Um, I think right around the time that RoboCop 2 was coming out. Because you know how he started doing like stop motion on Jurassic Park and then they decided that they were going to go with the computer-generated graphics? And he basically said to himself, well, I guess now computer graphics are coming in, so stop motion isn't a thing anymore. So he took Mad God and just kind of like shelved it. So it basically like sat on a shelf unfinished for like 20 something years. Is that old parts of it? Until, yeah, yeah, some of it are. I mean, obviously it's all been, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Because it all looks very consistent. But when he kind of like pulled it back out, like I guess when stop motion started getting like, people started appreciating it as an art form. And some of the other people at uh, his studio like saw it and they were like, dude, we should finish this. So he got um, he got on Kickstarter, he raised some money on there, and he got like a whole bunch of volunteers, like a bunch of people that would come in and work on it for free just because they were students and they wanted to learn from him or something like that. So this is kind of like a labor of love for him. He'd been working on it. Like I said, he had the idea back in the 80s and he only just recently finished it. So everybody was like really looking forward to it coming out and then it finally came out on Shudder. I think that it's also doing... Um, it's also doing a limited theatrical release, like at kind of art house theaters and things like that. And I mean, I have to say, this is incredible to look at. I mean, it's amazing looking. Yeah, visually and the music and everything. It's like a big, long, kind of like a audiovisual thing, almost kind of like watching a long music video in a way of, of hellish imagery. Looks like something out. I don't know. It's got its own look, kind of like something out. I don't know, nine inch nails or something. It's it's it, it's cool. It's not real coherent. It doesn't have any spoken dialogue in it. It's just this army of weird looking World War One guys in gas masks, and it's all stop motion. They're lowered down into the underground on a damn wire. It gets miles and miles down there into the, like this hellish landscape. It's kind of like hellish with fucking in- industry and medical procedures and dead bodies and tanks and fighting and weird shit. And he's just going down there with a briefcase with a bomb in it to complete some mission. But he gets captured and... They drill through his head and they take a damn weird looking baby out of him. It doesn't make any sense. It's just like something happening in hell. Uh, but it is weird. It's real weird to watch. It's about, Yeah, there's like a really yeah. lot of grotesque imagery in it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, the thing about it and like he's been interviewed about this and he basically said a quote from him that I found. Uh, he calls this a reflection of the absurdity of the world I live in. Okay. Uh, where he kind of sees the world as just uh, being overrun with, like, cruelty and greed and things like that. But the thing about this, it also has... I don't know. There's a lot of interpretations to it. Like I said, there's no dialogue. Um, I mean, things happen in it, 
but it doesn't really have a plot per se. It's more like it's more like a series of images that could like mean a lot of things, like depending. It's kind of I kind of got like a dis like a creation destruction narrative, like a cyclical kind of thing. And like I said, there's kind of like a Boschian, you know, like kind of thing to it too. It's almost like I don't know. It's it, I di I didn't get the sense that it was hopeful, but I kind of more got the sense that it was like really cynical in the sense that you're sending this person like down into hell and it's almost kind of like the same thing is like repeating over and over and then like the whole thing blows up and then like at the end you kind of think oh it's like it created this whole new world but then that one kind of starts to decay too so it's open to a lot of interpretations and i mean i kind of feel like he even said the older i get the less i worry about what the fuck it means or anything yeah. like that he's basically just going with his gut instincts, what he wants it to look like, and then, which in a way is kind of good because you can kind of like put your own meaning onto it. Yeah, the, to me, it was just like shit happens. <laughs> shit happens. It's just one kind of weird scene after another, after another, after another, and there is a little bit of continuity, but you don't really have to follow it. You can just chill, it, chill out and just kind of observe it and enjoy, enjoy it for how it looks. And just weird, disturbing things happen in it, one right after another. I mean, it does kind of feel like he pulled it out of his ass, but it's it's visually pleasing. It's just art. You know? Yeah. It's just art, you know. And like I said, it's... I, I saw it as a good um, demonstration of what could be and what should be done with stop motion. Stop motion's come a long way, if you do it right. I, I mean, mean, this it looks, looks amazing. Yeah, these are little miniatures, but you can't really tell they're miniatures... The thing has a fucking huge scope. It seems like really big places, you know, that this is taking place in. And you can do a lot of really cool effects with stop motion now. Shit, that's, it looks really good, you know. It kind of reminded me of a little bit of that Blood Machines. Yeah, and the look of it is kind of yeah, similar. Yeah, the tone was kind of like Blood Machines, but it's stop motion. And... I wish they would have just continued with Blood Machines. I, you know, I know. I think that I think Blood Machines just said all it had to say. It was, you know, dudes turning women into machines, and I guess they didn't want to go anywhere else with it. But that that should have been a whole series. I would have liked to have seen a lot more stories in that universe. And um, this one was kind of like that, but without 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 a cohesive narrative over it. It's just kind of like a demonstration of what can be done with stop motion. That's the way I looked at it. I mean, this, it had good music, you know. Yeah, I really liked the sound design. Actually, the guy yeah. that did the sound design, uh, I can't remember his name, but he would, had actually won an Oscar for that, and he actually volunteered to work on this for free. Because, yeah. like I said, Phil Tippett is, like, a legend in, you know, animation and stop motion and stuff like that, so a lot of people worked, like, volunteered to work on it just because they wanted to work on it, and what, it was kind of, like I said, a labor of love for him. What you could do is you could take... A movie like this and redo it and put a story in, in it and you'd and, and like a cohesive narrative maybe a, make a series taking place in that universe and it'd be like really it would have been really cool like say part in the heavy metal universe like the you know the, yeah because it kind of gave me that yeah, kind of vibe like some out of heavy metal i yeah. mean this reminded me in a way, you can kind of tell, and when we said, like, compared it to sort of like, sort of like Blood Machines, Blood Machines is recent, but it's it's retro in the sense that they're trying to make it look like the 80s, kind of. Yeah. It has, like, an 80s kind of new retro yeah, wave vibe to like it, kind of. Kind of like a high-tech, but dark and kind of sinister Flash Gordon with really high technology to produce it, but real retro kind of... The characters had real weird retro technology, but it was... It was a lot, but it's shot in a lot better, you know, a fucking CG, and it's just good, you know. Just goes to show you what could have, what you could do with a Flash Gordon type story nowadays if it looked right. I mean, fucking Blood Machines looked wild. I liked it. I liked it. That I, I could have had a whole series of movies in that style in that universe. Just, it's just not long enough. It was, you know, like four or five small little episodes, and they were kind of more like music videos in a way, just real visual oriented. It wasn't the story to me wasn't that satisfying, but I liked it. I really liked Blood Machines. I wish there was more of it. I mean, what I was gonna say though was yeah. that you know that was modern but had an '80s take to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. This one 
seems like you can kind of, I don't want to say you can kind of tell that it was conceived in the 80s because it's not exactly like that. It's kind of hard to explain. But it reminded me of a lot of these really weird, like, arty kind of shit that came back. Do you remember, like, do you guys remember, I think it was maybe, like, the early 90s when MTV had Liquid Television? Yeah. Like, that had all those, like, it weird, like, animation clips on it? Yeah, it's like It that. reminded me of something you'd see on there, but, like, a million times better yeah, produced. Okay. Okay. Now, like yeah. I said, shit does happen in it. It's not, like, just random. It's not a random series of images. It is, like you know, one thing happening after another. It's just that it's open to interpretation. So don't go into it thinking that it has, like, a, a traditional narrative no, because it does. Just kind of enjoy it. It's... A lot of the look is kind of like... It's, it's full color. It's kind it's, it's futuristic looking, but it's hellish with kind of a 1920s Art Deco type of motif. A lot of machines that showed look like something out of the damn 1920s and uniforms and stuff and then it has like some medical stuff that happens and weird it's just weird shit you know what I mean like and and then just also kind of reminded me of it had kind of like a medical horror themes look like something out of some weird yeah there's a, I mean it's there's a lot of grotesque this is definitely yeah. a horror movie that's for yeah. sure it's it has like a lot of really grotesque imagery there's gore there's yeah. poop yeah. You know, there's like, you know, there's shit like that. So, I mean, that one scene where he goes down, because I looked up on Wikipedia, and the little characters and stuff like that do have names. They don't have names, but they have like, you know, they have things that they're called. So the little guy that goes down in the diving yeah. bell first with yeah. the little gas mask and everything, he's called the assassin. Okay. Now, so they give him a map, and he has a suitcase with, do you find out later, has a bomb in it. And he goes down, and so he's just going through this, like like I said, like hellish sort of, uh, you know, series of places and looking for something in particular because he keeps looking and, like, tapping on his map, like, saying... And the map, like, keeps falling apart, too, like, while he's, like, every time he takes it out of his pocket, like, little pieces fall off. And he goes through this one place where there's these big, giant people. I mean, he's, like, this big, and they're, like, fucking enormous. Yeah, the big soldiers. And they're all yeah. in they're all sitting in electric chairs yeah. and they're all sitting there being electrocuted and there's like holes in the bottoms of the chairs and it looks like essentially like diarrhea like coming out and then like it goes down into the all these tubes and pipes and all the pipes go down and like go into this other thing and like things are like made out of that yeah. so there's very much like there's a whole thing where like a baby is like squished and like an alchemist like makes it into like dust dust and then it and then turns it into like a like a um what do you call it like from 2001 a space odyssey a monolith monolith. and then like it goes and like makes another universe or something like that so it's very much like that kind of trippy imagery but like i said it's real disgusting like there's one point where the first assassin because there's actually two but um the first assassin gets taken by like this surgeon and a nurse and they cut open his chest cavity and like they're digging around in there like throwing there's gore and they're pulling all this stuff out of his chest like jewelry and like books and stuff like that but like a bunch of like goop and stuff too and then they pull a baby out and it's like but i mean honestly one of my favorite images in this is the plague doctor the character you know what i mean it's this really really big like it looks like a plague doctor but it's got like this big hat and it's like all these kind of like bones and stuff like hanging from it it kind of floats and it has like all these little pieces of like wispy like black material like kind of floating behind it and it's like it's really really cool looking that's the thing that comes and gets the baby and then they scrub like i said it's not like you can spoil anything because it's just a mystifying and then there is some live action in it too because there's a human character and the whole time i'm watching it i'm like that dude looks so fucking familiar he's called the last man by the way and I looked it up. It's Alex Cox. That's the guy that directed uh, Sid and Nancy and Repo Man. Oh, okay. He's like a punk rock filmmaker. He's made yeah. like a fuck ton of movies and documentaries and stuff. And I was like, I knew that motherfucker looked familiar. I just hadn't seen him in a long time. But yeah, so Alex Cox is in this. Uh, and he sends down another little assassin. And then like different shit happens to that guy. But it's just kind of like, yeah, this is like, it's... It's, it's super bizarre. It's really bizarre. It's just a trippy experience. Yeah. Kind of like something you'd see when you were a kid back in the 70s and go and watch fucking the movie Heavy Metal or something. But, or you just... It's definitely the cult film. 
you know. It's, yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I, I, I really appreciated it more as like a demo of what you actually could do with stop motion. I mean, the sets in this were incredible. Yeah. I would really actually, I think there's a documentary out there somewhere like um, that's behind the scenes. And I'd like to see how big these environments are. Yeah. I, think I was thinking th I think that while I was watching big. it. It looked like. Yeah. Because, you I mean. make all these models and film them and stop motion. But yeah, because this is old work. school stop motion. Yeah. This isn't, because nowadays you can do it like a little bit. There's things Wait, to help you out. Yeah. But no, he did this absolutely move a little bit, take a picture, move a little bit, take a picture. And it's so fluid. It's real, it's real smooth. You yeah. Don't, you don't, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. not jerky. Yeah. It looks, it looks really good. And then there's things like flames in it. And it looks like real fire, which I imagine it's superimposed in there. There's a lot of trick photography in it. But uh, yeah, you can you can, and the the lighting's really good and just you know making environments out of damn junk basically. But it looks really good, you know. I just, mean, they're so I was, they must have yeah. like spent ages. I mean, the the environments are just like so meticulous. Yeah. Because they're walking through like I said these hellish environments. Like there's like they almost kind of look like big junkyards or yeah. things like that. And like when he goes down with his little bomb suitcase. And then he goes down to the place where he's supposed to leave it, and there's a big pile of other suitcases yeah. there, which kind of like, on the Wikipedia page, it says that he's supposed to leave the suitcase there because it'll blow up all the other ones. But I interpreted it as he's not the first one to do this, and the whole and the whole enterprise was futile. Yeah, it never does blow up. Because it never does, does blow up. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, well, he's just the latest in a line of like, the, and everybody's doing, it's almost kind of like, I, I saw it as kind of like a like a Sisyphean kind of task, yeah. where it's just kind of like, he just keeps sending down these little assassins, knowing that nothing's going to come of it, and that's what all of those like piles of, but I guess it could mean either thing. I don't know. Yeah. But there is like explosions and stuff that happen later, because there's like mushroom clouds and shit like that and it's not the thing about it the imagery is all really hellish and like really grotesque and everything but then there's that one scene in there that's like really beautiful you know that real like that neon place that looks like all happy and trippy and like there's all these mushrooms with like all the bright colors and everything and it's like that so i mean yeah this is just like amazing to look at like i said don't don't go into it expecting it to be like a movie in the sense of it having like a narrative thrust or anything like that but it's just i mean as a piece of art it's just incredible it looks incredible it sounds incredible uh there's a lot of babies crying in there so you know you might want to but it's just if, if you're into like grotesque visuals at all like you definitely should watch it because it's just just kind of like relax and let it sort of like wash over you don't try to like figure it out or anything like that because like i said i don't even think phil tippett you know, he—I don't think he ever came out and said, "Oh, it means this, that, and the other thing." No, they just added to it. They just kept I mean, stuff you can it. tell that he yeah. is like—you know—there is symbolism in there, and you can. But like I said, it's open to interpretation. So it's, it's kind of like in segments, though. Things meant something in inside a certain scene, and then I think it ended, and then it goes into a next one, and then a next one, and the next like episodes almost. They're not—they're not totally related, but. I also Somebody liked that the, the last man, played by Alex Cox, like I said, that he yeah. was the guy making the maps. Well, he wasn't making the maps. He had, like, a bunch of witches, yeah. like, underneath the table, like, in his laboratory. They were making the maps, like, sewing it together. I'm like, okay, have a bunch of witches under the table, as one does. Um, yeah, Slasher Fred points out, Liquid Television is the show that Beavis and Butthead uh, and Eon Flux got their start on. Yes, that's true. Um Eon Flux, I always kind of liked that animation, but, I, but I'd but i be lying if I said I knew what the fuck was going on in that cartoon. You can get them all together. She's just some you kind can. of secret agent. Yeah, I figured that out, but it's just kind of like yeah. a lot of it. I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. Yeah. There was a lot of really good uh, shit on there. I used to like um, Winter Steel, which was actually more puppets than animation, and uh, Art School Girls of Doom. That one was good, too. But yeah, there was a lot of really good uh, animation clips on there. The Eon Flux movie sucked. That's what, yeah, I was just going to say, Pat asked, what, what did we think about it? Yeah. I, I didn't think it sucked. I just thought it was just, like, really mediocre. Just be, yeah, well, that's the same thing. It yeah, just, it was just kind of meh. Yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't as, it wasn't nearly as weird as the cartoon uh -huh. was. was. I mean, they what, were trying to make it, like, normal. Yeah, it wasn't as weird as the cartoon. It wasn't as fucking just psycho, you know. The cartoon was just fucking psycho. 
Yeah, it was it was totally bizarro. Yeah. Like I said, I really liked it, but most of the time I'm just kind of like, what the actual fuck is going on yeah. right now? But it's, but that's kind of what was intriguing about it is you didn't really know what was going yeah. on. They're talking about other stop motion uh, animation. Somebody mentioned Clash of the Titans, which is actually one of my favorite. Yeah, that was uh, one of Ray Harryhausen's last ones. Danny Rowling says Coraline was a real good stop motion flick. It was, yeah, and that was uh, that's based on the Neil Gaiman book, right? Yeah, and I really, really liked, um, yeah, I really liked the look of that. Actually, I would like, I wouldn't mind seeing that one again. I think I saw that in the theater when it came out, and it's ostensibly it's a kids movie, but that's it's pretty fucking scary. I mean, for kids, like especially like the other mother with the button eyes and all that kind of shit. Hmm. That's it's fucking weird. I mean, it's Neil Gaiman, so you know what I mean? Yeah. The book was actually a little bit scarier because I read the book, too. Um, so they toned it down slightly for the movie, but not much. Uh, not much. I would like to see the like a more scary version, but Coraline was at, was actually like really, really good. Um, a stop-motion Shining would be cool to see. Oh, no, that's an intriguing proposition, isn't it? It would have to be like the Kubricki in Shining, like a stop-motion one. I think that'd be kind of awesome. DJ Maniac said, I was going to try and watch this today before work, but it seems way too heady. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is definitely one. It's it's visual. You can't just, like, put it on and, like, go fart around and do mm. something else. You have to, like, sit there and watch it. It's not super long. I think it's only 82 minutes or something like that. But, yeah, you definitely have to, like, watch the whole thing, like, closely because you'll miss shit. Especially if you just want to see all the detail that was put into this. Cause I was just, my mind was blown the whole time looking around at all the environments and how much time it must've taken to build all of that stuff. Because it's just, there's so many, there's so many environments that the little characters are moving through that Jesus, I was like, that must've taken fucking forever. And I was like, I was, uh, I was reading an article about this and somebody commented something and I was like yeah I relate to that they said they're like wow I wish I had this much commitment to anything ever yeah I mean that this guy like started this back in the 80s and then kind of like put it away for a while and then took it back out and then like the fact that he had and he had all these volunteers like I said students and stuff that would come and work on it with him like every weekend and just the patience that you would have see I see stop motion animation I love it like as an art form I love to watch it but I could never do it I'm just like way too impatient like for that kind of you have to just be so I'm sure it's very zen you know and it's like really relaxing but I could I couldn't do that so like mad respect to people that like got a bunch of bizarre stuff and it's kind of like if you like Silent Hill you'd probably like it it's kind of some of that stuff is like something out of Silent Hill everything is everything in this movie is like so tactile like it's like everything looks slimy and bloody and poopy and like this and there's like there's like creatures with like their with fur and the like actual yeah. real human teeth and shit like yeah. that it's like it's fucked up yeah. it. it's fucked up and now that i'm talking about it i actually wouldn't mind watching it again <laughs> just to like look at all the creatures because i was like so overwhelmed that i feel like i missed a lot of stuff so i don't know so i'm gonna have to like watch it again at some point but yeah i mean if you're into list stop motion at all and especially if you're into like real grotesque kind of shit then yeah you should probably watch it just don't expect there to be a story because there's not really not really yeah. but um, just, I, th- I thought it was just a good demo yeah i mean it's it's a visual a trip out watching. feast yeah, yeah 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 and you can just like sit there and watch it and listen to it like all the weird fucking sounds and the weird score and everything yeah. like that it's and super, the little super things weird. that happen on the scene and then it goes into the next scene yeah it's super yeah. weird it's super weird <laughs> Uh, Hugo said, I worked on a stop motion series with Seth Rogen, beautiful puppets and sets, but it tanked. Okay. It was too woke. What? Okay. Uh, stop motion series. What would that be? I didn't know they, mm-hmm. you guys should review the Silent Hill movies. They're awesome. I've seen, how many of them are there now? Because I've only seen the first one and I remember liking that one. Although I never played the video games. Um, but I remember the first movie being like pretty good. The first one is anyway. Okay, so the other ones aren't really all that good. I yeah, maybe we should do that one. We should probably do Silent Hill at some point. Maybe we should watch it tonight if I can find it. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a long time. I think I think I remember watching that like back when I was at that my apartment. So that was what back in 2010 or 2011 or something like that. When the fuck did that movie came out? Is it really that old? Mm-hmm. Holy shit! I guess it must be. I never seen the movies. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I remember the first one being good. I didn't bother seeing the other ones, though. I'm sure, like, people that are more into the video game, like, got more out of it, but I thought it was, like, pretty creepy and enjoyable. All right, so uh, you seem to be 
not talking anymore. So. Well, I just don't have any more to say about it. <laughs> I can't invent more to say about it. It's just, All right. So it I guess, well, we went on for half an hour, so that's yeah. okay. All right. So uh, we will be back tomorrow. I'm not sure what movie we'll be talking about because we'll have to find something to watch uh, mm-hmm. later tonight so we can talk about it tomorrow. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for dropping by. And we will see you guys again tomorrow evening. Bye.